Donald Trump is already laying the groundwork for how he is going to deny the results of the 2024 election. And after denying them challenge the results of the 2024 election. And it's not hard to figure out if you've been paying attention to the words that Donald Trump has been saying for months now, and not just him, the words of all his allies, including Republican house speaker, Mike Johnson, and the ongoing government shutdown fight is about the same issue, but here it is. Donald Trump has prepped the nation to falsely claim that illegal immigrants here in the United States voted for the Democrats. And that is how the Democrats stole the election. And of course, it's not just that they voted for Democrats. It's that the Democrats recruited these people to vote for them. Here's what Trump said during the debate. Our elections are bad. And a lot of these illegal immigrants coming in, they're trying to get them to vote. They're trying to get them to vote, referring to the Democrats. <laughs> they can't even speak English. They don't even know what country they're in practically. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they can tell, right? I mean, there, there's really no mistake. when you, when you get into America, you, you kind of know where you're at. Uh, and these people are trying to get them to vote. And that's why they're allowing them to come in or to come into our country. So blame the Democrats for recruiting the immigrants to illegally vote. And it gets worse as the new Republic points out, Republicans have long used the idea of immigrants voting illegally to justify voter suppression efforts, like requiring voters to provide state issued identification at polling places. But the more recent twist now is to construct a scheme they say is led by Democrats to use migrants who have recently arrived to commit non-existent voter fraud sometimes seizing on the work of groups, aiding recently arrived immigrants and capitalizing on social media's power to make a lie louder than the truth. Those who backed Trump's attempts to overturn the 2020 election results are now taking up this narrative of illegal immigrants and election fraud. In May, house speaker, Mike Johnson promoted a bill, which is what the possible government shutdowns all about right now to require voters in federal elections to prove their citizenship when non-citizens are already barred from voting in federal elections. A growing number of states are considering such redundant prohibitions in this election. Kentucky is one of eight states where voters will consider bans on non-citizen voting, which again is already illegal. They're just trying to make something illegal. That's already illegal. So they have an excuse to purge a bunch of foreign sounding people from their voter rolls. That's what this is about. Some conservative groups, including the heritage foundation are already mobilizing to confront purported acts of election fraud by non-citizens building on past efforts, adding what they learned from 2020. Some Republican state officials have joined them such as Texas attorney general, Ken Paxton, who has launched an investigation premised on a conspiracy theory. Cleta Mitchell, one of the architects of the stop the steal effort helped found a national campaign to train people to monitor elections in their own communities premised on the lie that millions of non-citizens may vote in November. So what do we do? What do we do if this is how Donald Trump attempts to challenge the 2024 election results when he loses? Well, we may not have to do anything. Now, listen, in 2020, when Donald Trump tried to, you know, do his little coup, the Democrats had control of the house of representatives. So it wasn't that difficult to do. You know, Democrats had the numbers to prevent Republicans from doing anything stupid. We may not have that this November control of the house of representatives could swing to Democrats, could stay Republican, could get more Republican. Same with the Senate. So if Republicans have a majority in the house and God forbid both the house and Senate, Democrats are kind of up a Creek or are they? Cause according to a new report, six Republicans in the house of representatives, which is enough to swing the power in the house, by the way, have banded together with Democrats to promise that they will honor the results of this election, no matter what those results are. The bipartisan group, according to raw story, which was organized by centrist uh, representatives, Josh Gottheimer, who is a Democrat and Don Bacon, who is a Republican includes representatives by uh, Brian Fitzpatrick, Republican from Pennsylvania, Mike Lawler, Republican from New York, Lori uh, Chavez de Reamer from Oregon, Nick Lalota from New York and Anthony Desposito from New York, all Republicans. Bacon, again, a Republican said, quote, 
In America, we respect election results, especially once the courts and appeals work through the process. We fight hard, we fight hard to win during campaigns and then respect the results when the votes are counted. So it's technically not necessarily as, as heartwarming warming, excuse me, uh, as you would think, because again, he's like, yeah, we're totally going to respect the results. Once the courts have their say and once the appeals are done, then we will totally respect it. So they banded together with the Democrats to say, we are going to accept the election results after we challenge the election results in court. And if we lose those challenges, then we're totally gonna, oh my God, this isn't, this isn't a bipartisan group then. Like this isn't, we're definitely going to accept it no matter what. This is still you guys saying, well, maybe something happened. Nothing happened. You're basing this on lies and conspiracy theories. That was proven in 62 different lawsuits filed by Donald Trump and his allies after the 2020 election. It was proven by the two groups that Donald Trump paid millions of dollars to, to find voter fraud. And then they couldn't find any voter fraud. It was proven by the guy, the Republican who entered the prove Mike Lindell wrong challenge and won $5 million by proving Mike Lindell's claims of election fraud to be wrong and fraudulent time and time again. I don't know how many more times you morons in the Republican party need to hear it, but there was no fraud. Georgia, the Republicans running Georgia. They're like, we looked at it. We couldn't find any Donald Trump's own people in the DOJ. The people he handpicked to run it came back and told him, yeah, man, um, doesn't exist. None of this is real. This is fantasy and fabrication told to you by Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell. Could, could we not do this? And even to this day, these Republicans who are pretending, I guess, to do the right thing, telling us that, oh no, we're totally gonna, we're gonna be good. We're gonna make sure that, that we, that we honor the election results after the court cases, after the appeals of those court cases, because they already know, like when we lose the court cases, we're gonna appeal them. And then, you know, once we exhaust the appeals, then we really will be legally ordered by the courts to honor the results. And I guess we'll do it then. Why did Politico not pick up on this? Why did Politico not examine the words that Don Bacon said there? I want to think these people will do the right thing no matter what. I would like to think that these people would do the right thing without it having to go to court because you've lost every case about it for four years. But here we are. I guess we can have faith in these six Republicans, but I don't know. Judging from their own words, kind of seems like they're also ready to challenge the election results right there along with Donald Trump. And again, this is all before the voting even starts. Hi everyone. This here is little Athena and Athena would like to know why you haven't subscribed to fair and balanced yet. So please, don't let Athena down. Subscribe today.